Hi, I'm Barbara, the Cozy of 100% Renewables. We specialize in the development of climate action strategies. In my last video, I talked about science-based target setting approaches. In, in this video, I'll talk about what you should consider when setting a science-based target. To ensure their rigor and credibility, science-based targets should meet a range of criteria. A science-based target, or SBT for short, should cover a minimum of 5 years and a maximum of 15 years from the date you set and publicly announce the target. You are also encouraged to develop long-term targets, say, up to 2050, say, a net zero goal. The boundaries of your SBT should align with those of your carbon inventory and your emissions reductions from scope 1 and scope 2 sources should be aligned with a 1.5 degrees Celsius decarbonisation pathway. SPTs should cover at least 95% of your scope 1 and scope 2 emissions. Now you may set targets that combine scopes, so for instance scope 1 and 2 or scope 1, 2 and 3 targets. The scope 1 and scope 2 portion of a combined target can include reductions from both scopes or only from one of the scopes. In the latter case, reductions in one scope have to compensate for the other scope. You should use a single specified scope to accounting approach, either the location-based or the market-based approach for setting and tracking progress toward an SPT. If you have significant scope 3 emissions, so if there are over 40% of total scope 1, 2 and 3 emissions, you should set a scope 3 target as well. Scope 3 targets generally need not be science-based, but should be ambitious, measurable and clearly demonstrate how you are addressing the main sources of value chain greenhouse gas emissions in line with current best practice. The Scope 3 target boundary should include the majority of value chain emissions. For example, the top three emission source categories or two-thirds of total Scope 3 emissions. The nature of a Scope 3 target will vary depending on the emission source category concerned, the influence you have over your value chain partners and the quality of data available from your partners. You should periodically update your science-based targets to reflect significant changes that would otherwise compromise their relevance and consistency. And lastly, offsets and avoided emissions do not count towards SBTs. The SBTI requires that you set targets based on remission reductions through direct action within your own boundaries or your value chains. Offsets are only considered to be an option if you want to contribute to finance additional emissions reductions beyond your science-based target. I hope you enjoyed this video. In my next video, I'll talk about the ambition gap. Thanks for watching.